Hey everyone, welcome back to the math office. In this video, we're going to take a look at functions. This is the first in a series on functions. So for this one, we're just going to get an introductory look at functions and then we'll get into some more details in some other videos later on. So before we actually start talking about functions in a mathematical sense, let's take a look at a few real world examples. Uh, so in the real world, there are many examples of measures or quantities that are directly affected by changes in other measures or other quantities. So some numbers in the world are affected by how some other numbers act in the world. So for example, let's say that you have a job. Uh, you work at your job and the amount of money that you earn at your job depends on how many hours you work. So the amount of money your paycheck has uh, is affected by the number of hours that you work. Also, let's say you're going to fill your car up with gas. The cost of filling your car with gasoline depends on how much you put into the tank. And it also depends on fluctuating gas prices that are spiraling out of control, but let's not complicate things here. Um, also, the amount of sunlight during the day depends on the time of year. So what I mean by that is uh, during the summer, you may have noticed that there's more daylight, like the sun comes up earlier and sets later, and in the winter, it uh, there's a smaller amount of daylight as well. So uh, the amount of sunlight is affected by the time of the year that it is. So this kind of relationship, when one value is dependent upon or is affected by another value, in math we think of that relation as a function. So we say that the size of your paycheck at your job is a function of the hours that you work. Or the cost of filling your car with gasoline is a function of how many gallons of gasoline you put into the tank. And the hours of sunlight during the day is a function of what day of the year that it is. So the value that's affected is a function of the other value that's affecting it. So let's look at a more formal definition here. A function is a rule that assigns or maps an element from a set of values, which we'll call the domain, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, maps it to exactly one element in another set of values called the range. So, for example, let's say I have a set of uh, numbers and another set of numbers. I have a blue set and I have a red set. So I have two sets of numbers. A function maps a number or a value from the domain to exactly one value in the range. Okay, That's a very important thing to remember. Uh, we'll need to remember that later on when we're talking about functions in other videos. Um, so the function just maps or takes a value from the domain and assigns a corresponding value in the range as a result. Now, in this example, 2 and 15 both map to 24, so more than one domain value can go to the same range value, uh, but the reverse is not true. So just keep that in mind when we uh, talk about functions later on in more detail. Uh, functions are also typically denoted by the notation f of x. Uh, which reads as the function of x, or just f of x for short. Uh, so when, I, when you see f parentheses x, that doesn't mean f times x. That's a common confusion. Uh, that just reads as f of x, or the function of x. We usually use f of x for short. So for example, uh, let's say that you want to write function notation for a rule that says square the number. Okay? So in function notation, that would look like f of x equals x squared. All right, so that's a simple one. Let's say that you also want to write a rule, a function rule for subtract 3 from twice the number. So as a function, that would look like f of x equals 2x minus 3. So writing a function rule based on a statement or a description of a rule uh, just really involves knowledge of writing equations, function notations, knowing how to write algebraic expressions, things of that nature. Let's look at the different parts of functions now. So you may have noticed in our examples we were tossing around x a lot, we even threw in a y for good measure. So when we're dealing with functions, we're going to be dealing a lot with variables. And there are a couple of different types of variables here. Uh, there's what's called the independent variable, or we denote that with x usually. So the independent variable, x, represents any element from the domain. And again, we'll talk about domain in a second. Uh, let's also say that we let y equal f of x. So y would be the dependent variable uh, because y, or the value of f of x, depends on what we plug in for x. So if we let y equal f of x, then y is the dependent variable representing a corresponding value in the range. So let's look at an example here. 
Uh, so if y equals 2 over x minus 5, x is going to be our independent variable because we can put whatever we want in for x. And then that's going to affect what the value of y is. So y is the dependent variable because it depends on whatever x is. So if we go back to our real world examples, your paycheck is the dependent variable because it depends on the number of hours you work. Or the cost of gasoline is the dependent variable because it's affected by the amount of gas you put into your car, so on and so forth. So another way to think of this is let's think of x, the independent variable. We think of that as the input of the function and the value of f of x is the output of the function. So basically you take the value of x, you plug it into the function and then it kicks out an output. So a commonly used metaphor for something like this, and we're gonna use f of x equals x cubed as an example. A commonly used metaphor when it comes to talking about input and output of functions is what is called a function machine. Now I have no idea what a function machine is and I'm not actually a huge fan of this metaphor, but I like drawing goofy stuff with uh, hollow tubes and levers and smokestacks and robotic legs, so I'm just gonna roll with it. So we have our function machine here. Specifically, we have f of x equals x cubed. And let's say we wanna figure out the value of f of x when x equals five. So five is our input. We toss that into the function machine. It kinda of chugs along. We got f of five instead of f of x. So f of 5 equals 5 cubed, and if you calculate that, uh, we'll get 125, so that's our output. So again, in this example, the input is 5, we toss that into the function machine, and then the output, the value of f of x, or f of 5, is 125. So now let's talk about the domain of a function. That term has come up a couple of times, uh, but we haven't really formally defined it. So the domain of a function is the set of all possible inputs for which the output is defined as a real number. So in other words, if you take a value from the domain and you chuck it into the function machine, the function machine will spit out a real number. Now there are some cases where you toss something into the function machine and what you get is actually undefined. So we're going to take a look at an example here in a sec. Uh, so f of x equals x squared minus 4 in this example. Now the domain of this particular function is just going to be all real numbers. You can stick whatever number you want in for x and you're going to get a real result every time. So the domain of f of x is all real numbers because the output of f of x will always be a real number when you do that. Let's look at a different example where that's not quite going to be the case. So we have f of x equals 2 over x minus 7. Now at first glance it might seem like the domain is going to be all real numbers because you know, x is just hanging out there. You can stick whatever number you want in, right? Well, let's see what happens when you stick 7 in for x. If you uh, simplify this, you have 2 over 7 minus 7. That gives you 2 over 0. And that's a huge problem. That's going to be undefined because you cannot divide by 0. In fact, if you try to divide by 0, the world's going to explode and you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. And when the world explodes, the rest of your life is only a few seconds anyway. But just... just don't do it. Don't divide by zero. No. Uh, the point, though, is that uh, the value of 7, if we make that our input, that causes the output to be undefined. So because that happens, we have to say that the domain of this function is going to be all real numbers except for 7. We can stick any other number besides 7 in here and get a real result. But if we stick 7 in there, we're going to get division by zero that's undefined. So we say that the domain is going to be all real numbers except for x equals 7. Now here are a couple of examples of how to write that using notation. We can use either set notation or interval notation. That's a different skill that we're not really going to be talking about uh, in detail in this video, but that's just an example as so you can see what that would look like. Last thing we're going to talk about is how to evaluate a function. And really we've been doing that in our examples already. Evaluating a function just means we're going to take the input, we're going to plug it in to the function, and we're going to calculate the output. Okay? So we're going to evaluate each of these functions at x equals 2. Uh, now you may have noticed that with my function notation I'm using different letters, f and g and h. That's perfectly okay. In fact, you can use whatever letter you want to for function notation. It's really handy to do it in a problem like this because it makes it a lot easier to keep track of the different functions. So you can use f of x, g of x, h of x, you can use m of x or p of x or q of x or whatever of x that you want to. 
Uh, we usually stick with f of x uh, in general, but again, you don't have to do that. You can use whatever letter. Anyway, so let's evaluate each of these functions. Let's evaluate f of x at s equals 2. So f of 2 is going to equal 3 times 2 squared plus 11. That's 3 times 4 plus 11, which is 12 plus 11, which is 23. So when we evaluate f of 2, we get a result of 23. If we evaluate g of 2, that's just 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. So when we evaluate g of 2, we get 1 eighth. And finally, we're going to evaluate h of 2. So that's the absolute value of 5 minus 9 times 2, which is the absolute value of 5 minus 18, which is the absolute value of negative 13, which is just 13. So there you have it. That's how you evaluate a function. All right, that's all the time we have for this video. Uh, that's your introduction to functions. Stay tuned because there will be more videos coming up in this series. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the box below. Until then, good luck and happy math.